Hey everyone, and welcome to my review of Real Steel. Now, this is a movie that, honestly, I, uh, I was actually kind of excited about. Not because I thought it would be anything mind-blowing, but because the trailers really sold me on the fact that it's going to be a fun kind of movie. And I like boxing movies in general. Uh, anyone that's seen my review of uh, the Rocky series will know this. And, uh, frankly, it's actually uh, very easy to draw direct comparisons between Real Steel and a lot of these other types of movies. Uh, it's a very formulaic movie. You know every plot twist that's coming uh, before it happens. If you don't, you really haven't seen very many movies of any kind. And you know all the paces that the characters are going to go through. The only thing I can say for this is that there's a slightly different ending than you'd think there'd be. But uh, even then, it's, it's mostly predictable. It's just in the details of it that it's somewhat odd. But otherwise, again, very predictable movie. At the same time, though, it, uh, it's a lot of fun. The trailers did not lie. Uh, it, it, it mixes the very formulaic boxing movie formula, the underdog rising up to the top, and bad, uh, the, the bad guy may have more strength and more experience, but the good guy's just got will to go on. And it's got the father-son bonding plot line that it advertises in the trailer, very much in spades. This is actually a longer movie. It's uh, two hours and seven minutes. And I think that's beneficial, despite this being a very formulaic plot, and I'll explain why in a moment. But just to finish off, uh, not only is this father, the, the main plot revolves around this father-son dynamic, the other half of the movie is robot boxing, and I think largely because this movie succeeds is because of the fact that it manages to balance these two really nicely. Uh, there's enough characterization in the movie with uh, Hugh Jackman's father character and the kid figure who's only slightly annoying near the beginning, which you actually do end up kind of liking him, and the robot boxing itself. It doesn't really undersell either one, and again, the runtime is, is uh, really key here because while it could have been shorter, it could have told the same story, I do not think it would have managed to sell its heart in that time. I think it needed the two hours and seven minutes to try and make that story seem believable and to actually make you give a shit. And you, it's not like you have an enormous emotional investment by the end of the movie, but I think it still requires a, a decent bit of characterization to make that uh, you know, underdog rising up to the top plot line really work because by the end you expect them to make this like oh yeah go 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 and you get that in this one other movies sometimes you don't because they just don't spend enough time on the characterization and this is far from what i was expecting to be perfectly honest i was expecting to be all robot battles and i was cool with that just going in to see a fun movie but uh, i'm glad they definitely went this route that said Robot fighting, there is a good amount of it. Not only does it manage to do its characterization, but it balances it really well, like I said. So, while there is obviously those the montages that you'll get, uh, not only for training, but uh, also because uh, you have to move up leagues, uh, gains more popularity throughout certain points of the film. So, you really only see uh, the beginnings of specific portions, like a uh, low rung, league, final, so on and so on and the montage through the rest. And while it can feel like there were one too many montages, perhaps, uh, you do actually see a lot of robot fighting, um, more so than you would expect. So the only reason it feels like there's a lot of montages is because, honestly, it's really well done. And uh, just putting aside the characterization for a minute, they really make the, the robots weighty, more or less. Uh, it's a nice mix of animatronics and digital animation here. And uh, every time, as in even boxing movies, they've managed to instill the robotic characters with that kind of sense of impact every time they're hit. And that's always, that always makes a good film. It's always exciting to see the battles, even if you kind of know where they're going. And um, again, really, really nicely done. I particularly like the fact that they managed to imbue them with uh, slight amounts of personality, but they didn't make them fully human. Uh, there was at no point where uh, you got the robot saying, like, don't worry, I'm going to do it for you kind of thing. Um, they were still very much robots. They're very much a plot device. And while a very clever plot device to get across the same plot that we've been wa or watching for however many years now, uh, it's, uh, it still works, frankly. It still works. I really enjoyed it. Going back to the characterization for a moment... I like the fact that they don't necessarily shortchange some of the side characters, too. Uh, they bring smaller villains back for their comeuppance, which, is, again, depending on your uh, tolerance for predictable plot lines, that may be more annoying to you than it was to me. 
And uh, I, I really like most of all, the, for the fact, is that the villains are all so over the top. I mean, the main characters are played as if they were real people, more or less. But the villains, oh my heavens, they are ridiculous. You have the evil Russian woman who talks like this. And I'm surprised her name wasn't Natasha. They have this evil Japanese engineer who's like, you know, clear, like, cool, quiet Japanese guy with sunglasses. Design, you're just like, oh my god. They, got, they, they had the punk hillbilly character who's like, no, man, you gotta fight me now. And he's got, like, his mohawk. They've got, like, the, this, this the southern country guy. And, oh, all of them are ridiculous, and while it does clash with the main characters, honestly, it makes the movie a lot of fun, uh, if only because they are so ridiculous, and it's so much fun to actually see them just be on the screen. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I mean, as far as the story goes, they do clash with the regular characters, but alongside them, alongside with their robots and this robot boxing ring, it's an enticing world to actually step into for a couple hours, and honestly, you could do a lot worse this month. There's been some not-so-great things coming out, hopefully, some good things coming out later, and uh, honestly, definitely go see Real Steel. A uh, couple things I want to mention before I go. Like I said, digital animation is fantastic. Nice use of animatronics. It's not very noticeable at times, even, and it's nice they're not going entirely digital. I think that's actually key to making them seem real. Uh, they even get blo <coughs> sorry, excuse me, possible explanations as to why human boxing disappeared as opposed to robot boxing. It makes a lot of sense, frankly. Uh, as to why people went to see the movie. Hey, wouldn't boxing be cool but with robots? But two other things. One, the music. A uh, lot of vocal tracks going throughout it. That was a lot of fun. I like how it just wasn't uh, just a straight score. I think movies, a uh, movie like this, that's just really all about the entertainment with the slight emotional involvement, that really worked out for it. I really liked uh, every time they'd enter an arena, you'd really get that feeling of excitement of going to an arena yourself almost, and uh, replicated that really nicely. One other thing they re they replicated was the enormous amount of product placement in the re sports arenas, and wow, there's a lot of it here. It wasn't necessarily to the detriment of the movie, because this is not uh, an incredibly in-depth movie that's really trying to make the greatest story ever told, but uh, it was very noticeable, and took me out of the story, not in the sense that I stopped enjoying it, but that I got a good chuckle out of noticing, wow, there is a lot of product placement here. Like, every time they control the robots, there's like an HP logo. Uh, they, they go into Bing Arena, Coke, Xbox, or Xbox 360. It's just absolutely insane, the number of things that they're advertising. And, but you know what? And again, in this movie, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, didn't really take me out of it. And in all fairness, they are in sports arenas. They are do, do that, so... I guess it's realistic in that sense. Arguably, it wouldn't really matter if you're being realistic in a movie about robot boxing, but that's besides the point. Should you go see Real Steel? Yes, I think you should. It's a lot of fun. It's very much one of those, it feels like one of those summer movies that you enjoy. It's not the best of the summer, but it's a lot of fun to go to. And it's nice getting one of those ones in October before they start to dry up again, uh, before we have to wait until uh, December and March. Go see it. If you like the trailer, that's basically what the movie is. You might like the movie slightly less or slightly more than I do, but I can't imagine anyone hating this movie. Uh, it, like I said, it's a very predictable movie, but it's one of those movies that, despite the fact that it's very predictable, manages to do hit all the right notes and do what it wants to well. And I can respect that. Sometimes that's all you want out of a movie. It's no high achiever, but Real Steel is a lot of fun.